here. Oh no. Okay, Instagram, I'm trying to go live. Thanks. Oh no. Oh shoot, I'm live. Oh, I'm sorry guys, I'm trying to go live on Instagram and don't know if it's letting me, okay, you are live. Okay, I'm live on Instagram. Woo, I made it. I'm on time. My screen's looking a little fuzzy, but I'm here and I'm on time. That's all I care about. How is everybody doing? I hope you are doing well. It is Friday and we, we haven't had a Friday Night Live in a long time. So welcome, welcome. You guys come on in. I'm just uh, making sure I am legitimately live on Instagram. And my big old fingers keep hitting every key but the right key. So uh, here we go. All right. All right. I got my bells and the topics that I want to talk about and my cover reveal for my book. So we are good. You guys come on in. Uh, let me see. It's not showing that I'm live. Guys, I don't know what I'm doing on Instagram. I might just have to do it from my phone. Why am I not live? Okay. Um, I'll get to Instagram in a second. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to stream Instagram from, once you're live, if your stream is public, you'll find it at the top of your feed. All right. Well, StreamYard is saying that I am live on Instagram. So um, it is what it is. All right. So people, 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 I'm so happy to see you guys. Come on in. Come on in. Tonight's subject, I, I need to hear about this. It's toward the end of the school year. I know you are on your last leg. Tonight's subject is, uh, is your homeschool on life support? Be honest, all right? And we are gonna talk about ways to use CPR to resurrect, to revitalize your homeschool. Plus I have a couple of um, announcements. So, um, no, I don't wanna, I'm not, ugh. I'm on the wrong. Child, I'm streaming from my other account. Uh, all right, y'all. I'm sorry. Don't don't click off. I'm I'm in a different one of my different uh, accounts. On I hate I hate IG. Okay, so bear with me. All right, so we're talking about CPR and resurrecting your homeschool, and how do you do that? Because it's late in the school year. It's almost May. You know, you have Mother's Day coming up, and then it's June, and it's just a sweet little short slide until summer vacation. <coughs> Excuse me. And for some of you, you are already, and gold star for you, you are already planning for the new school year. And some of you, you're just trying to get through today. Gold star for you. We don't discriminate, okay? Um, so I want to talk about some other things that you can do to finish strong with your homeschool, no matter how much you effed it up. We want to finish strong and then, um, you know, and set the scene for the year um, coming up. Okay. Just, I'm still not sure. Okay. If anybody wants to be a deer, if you could go to my IG and see if I'm live, because I don't trust StreamYard to say that I'm live. Um, how do I hit live? Okay, here we go. All right. So we're going to talk about a couple of ways you can do that about, I have five tips and then I'm going to talk about my book and then I'm going to, then I have, <coughs> excuse me, I have another announcement to make. All right. What? Okay. Um, it's showing my, my green screen here. All right, guys. Sorry. My throat's a little dry. Let me take a sip of my tea. And this, this, uh, this cup is a lie because I'm not queen of everything. Okay. Um, hey, IG, I am live. Supposedly I'm live on IG through my stream yard. I don't see it. So I'm just coming in to say, hey, if um, once I close out of here and you don't, this is my green screen behind me. If you don't see, ooh, I look different than I do right here. If you don't see this live, go over to my YouTube channel and watch. Um, I don't know if the the API key went, went through for StreamYard. So all of you, Plant of Change, iJones, I know you guys come on over if you don't see me as I log off. 
Okay. All right, guys. I'm sorry. I'm here. I'm back and I'm burning up. Okay. So first things first, if you have been following my, uh, oh Lord, I'm hot. I need a fan. If you have been following my IG, Facebook, if you, if you just been following any of my social media, you will know that I've written a book and now I'm in the promotion stage. Now, this is a book on homeschooling. And um, this week I gave like a little, each day I did a countdown and I showed a little bit of my book cover. So today, tonight is my cover reveal and I'm super excited. I've been working on this book forever, over 18 months. And it is a labor of love. I know you guys are going to love it. It is funny. It is practical. It is honest. But more importantly, it's very valuable. I'm calling this my homeschool Bible. So without further ado, I'm going to show you my book cover. And uh, and then we'll go from there. So let me quell my beating heart and bring it up. Now, I kind of did a little review like two months ago because I didn't know what I was doing. But then I I joined a writer's boot camp and they were like, girl, no, wait, this is how you do it. <laughs> so uh, so here we go. All right. So this is the final cover for my book. OK, here we go. All right, you can't hear me talking when I remove myself from the stage, but uh, I'll just have the book cover my face for now. <laughs> but yes, this is my book. It is called The Humorous and Practical Handbook for Stress-Free Homeschooling. And the main title is When Life Gives You Homeschool Lesson Plans. And you have here, I can't enlarge it on this screen. Um, you have here, you have a homeschooler. Y'all, she is stressed. She's got everything coming at her. It is raining on her. All the stress, the math, the arts and craft, the sports stuff, the extracurriculars, her kids fighting, kids sleeping through class, dogs tearing up stuff. She got the whole sitcom going on right here. And it's probably 8.05 in the morning. But listen, if you see, if you look at the tightrope, you'll see you'll get there. And you see it's bumpy because it's a bumpy ride. But you're going to get there. So um, it's very inspirational. I have a ton, a ton of um, advice, real world examples. Um, it's about 270 pages. If you don't include the glossary, yes, I have a glossary, I have an index. I have a lot of stuff. Y'all, this, this is a real book. Um, it's a lot of information. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm starting next week when I start the full court press for um, the promotion. I'll read chapter excerpts and you guys can ask me questions and then I'll have some giveaways. I'm actually getting close to 5,000 subscribers. So I'll have giveaways for that. And also uh, just giveaways for the month leading up to my book. On Monday, I'll, I'll open up everything for pre-orders and I'll release the launch date or the official release date for my book when you can actually buy it from Amazon or uh, BookBub. I mean, book, all the Apple books, all those other um, retailers. So, so that's that. So um, if you have any feedback on that, um, let me know. Also on Monday, I will be sending out a call for a oh, high hunting wisdom. I saw one of your uh, comments um, on a video uh, yesterday. Uh, it's good to see you. And um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I know usually when I go live on Friday, sometimes it's around 5.30. It's usually tough on Friday because something always pops up with my family. But um, I think I'll find the sweet spot between 5.30 and 6, especially for those um, in the UK because they have to get up early or something like that. But um, yeah, so, um, so next week I'll be showing more information, sharing more information. Um, I'll be looking for ARC readers. And what that means, um, an ARC is an advanced reader copy. And all that means is you get a copy of my book, an electronic copy, an ebook, basically. And you'll read that. And um, 
you know, you're kindly asked, but it's a voluntary to give a review of the book. So if you want to be on my official ARC team, I will be launching that on Monday along with the pre-orders. So with all of that out the way, let's get to it. All right. So you know how we do? We like to start our lives with a win, a small win. So, um, and I'll start it off as more of you guys come in to the live. I know I'm 30 minutes earlier than usual, guys. So, um, so just, you know, you got me all to yourself right now. Okay. So first, let me just give you some examples of when your homeschool is flatlining. And then you guys can come in and give examples, you know. Oh, listen, if you want to come on, looking at you, Sade, if you guys want to come on live, you don't have to show your face. You can just do audio. If you want to come on, because I, I will do it, so I won't show your face, or you don't have to do it on your end. But if you want to come on and talk, give a testimonial, if you have something you want to promote, um, if you're a small business owner, come on in, and you know we're nice, we're friendly, and um, uh, come share what you want to share. Uh, Steph, thank you so much. Thank you. You know, um, last year I talked about, no, in January, I talked about my my keyword for the year was um, Phoenix, right? So that's the Phoenix, you know, the bird that dies and then rises up through the ashes and the flames, uh, renews itself. And I said, that was what I wanted to do um, because, and this goes to my second announcement, a nice little uh, seamless um, transition. I am no longer a homeschooler. Shocker. Some of you, if you're on my... Um, I think it's on my IG channel. I put, I'm a retired homeschooler. I put that in the description. And I, well, I was retired. I didn't want to be pushed into retirement, but my kids put me in retirement. Um, so all of my kids are in public school as of last August. And uh, I still, I'm still holding out hopes for my youngest child. Then he'll come back. But uh, it, it would only be for one year though. But I, I'm not holding my breath for that. So it's a little bittersweet and I'll make another video where I just talk about, you know, homeschooling, looking in the rear view mirror, you know, things I would have done differently, things that I loved and, you know, my advice to younger homeschoolers and things like that. So, yeah, so I'm making that announcement now. So I'm not homeschooling. So what I'm doing now is just taking all of my 15 plus years. I've been in this game, you know, 15 years, right? My oldest is 17. Yeah. A little bit longer. Cause honey, I was teaching him to read when he was like not even three, um, where he was like reading well. Um, so it's 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 a lot. Like if you're in any other profession, I mean, you're a veteran, you're a senior level. So for us moms, you know, that's time put in. So um, so I'm taking all of that knowledge and I'm going to share it with you guys. All right, so let's get into the topic. No, the win. You can tell I'm rusty with my live streams. All right, so my win, huh, duh, is, where's my win? This is my win. <laughs> my book. That's my win. End of story. <laughs> so that's my win. Um, and actually, I have another YouTube channel. It's about homesteading, and it's called The Messy Homesteader. And the tagline is, just start. Because a lot of times we... This leads, and I'm going somewhere, y'all. This leads into the homeschool CPR. You get into a rut or you're in that perfectionist mode where I can't start because everything has to align. That keeps you from progressing. So if you just get in there and start ugly, like the I the first cover reveal I did, I think maybe in February or I don't even know. It was a couple of months ago. Some of you, some of my veterans, you know, I did a cover reveal. As a matter of fact, this is what I showed you guys back in the day and i had messed it up because i didn't know i'm like let me just get in here and just get going so i can get some momentum and then my writer's group was like no that's really not you can do it but then you can do it more successfully and so um but i got out there and then i had that information of what not to do and this is where we go with homeschooling because um you just need to get in there make your mistakes get your CPR 
and now you get revived and then you start to make changes like you're eating better you're exercising well with homeschooling maybe you're trying a different method of teaching maybe you're using different curriculum maybe you're going in a different room maybe you're doing more things outside the house maybe you've um outsourced some classes you know for some of your kids you know maybe you just sat down and just listen to your kids for once so all those things we're gonna get into that this might be a long uh live all right, uh, Hunting says, I would love to come on. Give me a few minutes. Oh, cool. So let me put the link uh, for, if anyone wants to come on, I will put the link in the chat or the comment section. And then um, actually, do I have to email it? No. You should be able to, to, to get on with that link. Let me know if you have any problems, Hunting Wisdom. All right. Uh, Steph says, you are so brave. Thanks for continuing to help us. Listen, this is one thing I learned. I learned this from my marketing professor in college. I had a C in his class. I always sat in the front. I always asked questions. I was always engaged. I was just lazy because I was involved in so many things. And um, so I had a C. I had never had a C before. So I was freaking out. So I went to his office hours and let's take that off. Um, he said, Miss Ebony, Miss Nikki, well, that's my, my real name. He said, um, I'm going to give you a second chance. I'm going to give you a chance to redo uh, this quiz. The quiz was high stakes, actually. Oh, hold on. My son's at the door. And my husband, hold on, let me see. Don't they know I'm filming? Hold on, y'all. Where's your cake? Well, where is dad's car in the driveway? Is is he coming? All right, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. I keep telling him, take your key. And I told him this was the last week I was going to let him in the house. Because you know what? He left his key in his pocket and I washed it in the washing machine. And I bet you the key is sitting on top of the dryer. All right, y'all. Give me one second. Don't leave. Don't leave me. Don't leave. Alright guys, I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry. I actually good. Nobody left. Thank you. I actually have something to put on the screen when I have to leave. It plays music, but things happen so fast. So anyway, whoo! I ran up and down the stairs. Of course, he left his house key on top of the dryer. All right. Okay. What was I talking about? Y'all, what was I talking about? I have the memory of a gnat. Hold on, let me see. Um, what was I talking about? Can somebody put it in the in the chat? I'll catch up on the comments and hopefully you'll come back to me. Okay. Oh, about being brave. Steph said you're brave. Okay, marketing professor. He said, I'm gonna give you a second chance to get it together. And he was like, Why um what did he say? Something about why, why should I give you a second chance? Well, he was like, you know, um, you show up, you know, you're active, you're engaged, but you need to align the effort with your goal. It was something how he said, I forgot. It sounded clever at the time, but he had put this expectation on me and um, I didn't want to let him down. I didn't care about me. I didn't want to let him down. Come to find out it's Oh my gosh, y'all, we have to do a book club. Come to find out, he was using a psychological uh, trick on me. If you ever um, if you ever read Dale Carnegie's book, How to um, Win Friends, How to Influence Friends, How to Win Friends and Influence People, or Robert Greene's The Art of Seduction, and then his other one, or Stoicism, they talk about psychology and the, manip the manipulation of the mind. 
So I saw the classic example that he was using on me. I saw it in uh, how to win friends and influence people. And um, I'm trying to look for it because I have all the books out. But anyway, so um, he says, young, oh, I remember, young lady. And there's like 300 people um, in class. I went to like the largest university in the state of Texas. So there's a lot of people in, in the class. He said, what I liked about you, you talk a lot, but you were always consistent whether you were wrong or right. He says, when you would say an answer, even if you weren't sure if it was right, you were just as loud as you were when you knew the answer. And I love that. I love that conviction. And I was like, dang, that's all it takes. So it's really just being messy. So it might be right or wrong, but you're being seen, you're being heard, you're being um, felt. So um, so some people call it bravery. Other people call it just showing up, right? So, because half the time people won't show up, just like for scholarships. I was talking to a good friend this morning and her son's a senior and she was talking about, oh, I don't know about all these scholarships. I'm like, girl, Half the people don't apply for scholarships. Half the battle of getting money is just filling out the doggone application. Half the battle. All right. I, I, I'm digressing. Let me catch up on some of these comments. And then who is it? Steph that wants to come on? No hunting wisdom. Uh, whenever you're ready, just let me know, baby. Okay. Um, Salish says, got to run, but can't wait to catch the replay. Oh, no worries, my dear. No worries. Don't forget to don't forget to put a like and share on the um on the video. Uh, hey, Katesh, uh, I'm going to uh, DM you. Wait, can I DM you on YouTube? I want to talk to you. So um, uh, how can I do that? If you don't mind, uh, hmm. my email address is in the description box. It's homeschoolknockouts at Gmail. I want to talk to you because uh, I want to send uh, something to you. All right. Um, Oh, I want to read the Win Friends book with my kids. Listen, I want to read it with my kids too because now they're older and they can start seeing the things that they're reading. They can see it in motion um, at school. That's the one thing I do like about them being in school. One of the only things is that I can have them practice all the things that they've learned. Like I tell, I told my oldest one, when he was um, going to his first history class, you know, that's going to be a doozy. I was like, listen, you ain't, I, I, nine times, 10 times out of 10, you ain't going to agree with what's being taught in that classroom. Now you got debating skills behind you. I'm going to need you. So I don't have to come up to the school. I'm going to need you to be respectful for all the interruptions you're going to have. <laughs> when your teacher's talking, but he had to learn. Like the first day he went in for, for his English class, they had, y'all, I'm in California. They had, she had little placards. She was the only teacher that did this. Uh, that's a whole nother story. That's the story time. She had, you know, that movement of, you know, who you are, who you're not. And I was like, look, okay, how you want to play it? You want to make friends in that class? You want to make friends with this teacher? Do you know your stuff inside and out? So if she is hostile against you. She can't affect your grade. We had to strategize. And I'm like, you know what? I'm glad I'm having this conversation with you because you're getting real world experience. Because when you go outside uh, this household, you're going to be, this is what you're going to be dealing with. All right. Let me catch up with the, um, okay. Caught up with the comments. Okay. So CPR. So number one. The number one thing you can do with, uh, well, let me just, let me just reel it back. Okay. Because I'm not homeschooling anymore, but it has been a rewarding journey for me and my children. And, uh, a number of times, despite all the great things that come with homeschooling, you know, you get stuck in a routine. Okay. You get stuck in a rut or you just do the thing that's, you know, it's just is right there in front of you, right? Like your your old pair of favorite jeans or your old raggedy bra. You know you should throw it away, but it's just it's comfort. You you don't want to try anything new. So being in that rut, the daily grind of lessons, worksheets. You know your kids. You know roll their eyes when they see another worksheet. You know you just have to shake things up. So what can you do to shake that up? So the first thing 
that I would do and that I did do, and I put it under CPR, the three things. C, I wish I should have put this um, as a graphic, but I don't have it, is creativity. Creativity, okay? And what that means is you got to switch up your environment. Now, a lot of you know, I um, have a son who was on the spectrum. I said was, and that's a whole nother story time because if he were to be diagnosed by a neurologist today, he would not pass any of the markers for it. But um, I had to be creative. Otherwise, I, I was going to be put out the game. And so um, you just it takes a little time to just sit down and think of how you can make something creative, okay? Or a little time to just Google it on your computer. But it's switching up your learning environment. And you ain't got to like go to a different room, buy stuff. If your child is always sitting on the couch at, at the desk, tell him to go to the wall and do his work. For example, and I don't mean like take your book to the wall and do your work like that. I'm talking about, hold on. And if you don't have this, this is fine. This will be one of your best friends. Now, I'm going to show you some options where you don't need to buy anything. But let me see what I have on here. Oh, oh what is this? All right. All right. This is something I did with my kids a long time ago. But a whiteboard. You up? Oh, why is it disappearing? All right. I have my old all about spelling stuff on here. Um, you can grab butcher paper. Or you can just have your child go to a counter anywhere or they can sit on a couch but sit like upside down especially if they're reading if they're reading you know they sit on the couch feet up like this read your work like that and when it's time to write in it flip over you know if they sit in the desk all the time tell them to get on the floor get a little rug or get a whole bunch of blankets have them sit on that sometimes just the novelty is enough to get them okay i'll do this you know get their work done Go outside, change up your environment. If you um, if it's winter time or it's 110 degrees, I don't know what to tell you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> then you do these other things. You know, you can go to another room, maybe a taboo room like your bedroom because you don't want all their mess in there. Okay, tell them to get on the bed and do the work. You know, just one place that's different where they normally do the work. We call that a pattern break. And a pattern break is one of the best ways to, to trick your mind, to jumpstart things, is to get your mind and your body out of the pattern that you're always in, that rut, okay? You know that rut that in the ground from the tracks of a car or the wheel, that rut, and you just can't move because you got to look up and then step out. So change up the environment, okay? or Maybe just go to the dollar store and get some cheap little things to trick out their room. I have these um, little string of lights and they're battery powered. They take two double A's. Child, my, one of my kids, he loved that. As a matter of fact, he put it around his neck for like a necklace, but uh, like a wrapper necklace. But just putting that around the desk or on the floor, wherever they're sitting, is a little bit ambiance lighting, right? So it's just little small changes. We talk about small wins. We're also talking about small changes. Let me take a sip. If you don't do field trips, do a field trip. And I don't mean something you got to pay to get access in. Go for a walk somewhere. Uh, go see, you know, if there's a museum, an aquarium. Just do a pattern break. Break that pattern, okay? Just be creative about your day. Maybe it's something you do once a week. On Fridays, this is how we, we roll. Or on Mondays, because you dread Mondays. This is what we do on Mondays, okay? You want to have that pattern break. And to do that pattern break, you want to be creative, which is the C in CPR. Um, say if you're doing something like unit studies or say you're studying in space or something like that. Um, Make it more interactive. If you're always in the books and in, in the, the worksheets, make it more interactive, okay? If it's always interactive and it's a lot for you, maybe get them some books or some worksheets or have them go online and have some intentional screen time just 
getting their work done, trying something different. Even if it doesn't fall within the lesson plan for that day, sometimes that's all you need is to just get a little a little shot of adrenaline um, going with your child. Okay. Oh, here we go. And we have one of our lovely guests. This is Hunting Wisdom, but I see... Wait, are you Hunting Wisdom, Alicia? Is that you? Okay. Hi. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> Listen, we're going to give her a win for coming on. <laughs> wait, wait. That's right, right. Let me give you a big one. Absolutely. So, Alicia, am I saying it right? Oh, hold on a second. Let me. Let Turn me this uh, up. Just uh, I'll I'll get that. Too low. Okay, there we go. We got you. Hunting with some is Alicia. There we are. What was that? My namesake with the with the Jackson. Alicia. So welcome, <laughs> welcome. If you don't mind, um, if you want to introduce yourself to the family, to the tribe, you know, maybe how long you've been homeschooling, how many kids you have, um, if there's any other information you care to share, just to get us going, you know, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Alicia Kathleen Jackson. Oh, Ooh, she got the full government. <laughs> you got the full government. Yes. Hey, I'm look, out there now. Look, I'm out put there. Some hand claps, put some no hand claps or some fist bumps in the in the chat because she went full government for y'all. <laughs> yes. Alicia Kathleen Jackson. On YouTube, I have my channel, Hunting Wisdom. I also have, well, Hunting Wisdom is pretty new, but I also have a new channel called Single mm -hmm. Parents Supporter. Okay, so stop right there. So mm -hmm. for Hunting Wisdom, is that a homeschool channel? It definitely can be because it's very educational. Trivia. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to let them know. So if you want to drop that, I don't know if they'll let you do links, but just try anyway. Drop the link for both your channels. Okay. And um, that way you guys can go out and support her. Okay. Uh, I mean, all of us, look, I'm writing books. We all have lives outside of just teaching our children. So let's go and, and support our moms um, out here who are her doing, uh, and that's a win right here. You got two channels. Woohoo! Yes. So let me yes. write it down so I can go and listen. I just started so, this other channel last night at like three in the I morning. Like I woke it. up. I like <laughs> last minute. Wait a minute. Hunting wisdom. Is that is that it? Hunting wisdom? Hust hunting wisdom with a question mark. With a question mark. That's YouTube. And then what's the other one? The other one's also a YouTube channel. It's called Single Parents mm -hmm. Supporter. Single Parents Supporter. Okay. Yes, so are you a single mom homeschooler? I am. Oh my gosh, yeah. we have to have a video uh because I have one of my good friends, she's a single mom supporter. I want to have a panel because you guys are the superheroes because <laughs> it's, Thank all, you. it's all on you. Ooh, it's all on you. So I'm I'm gonna reach out to you because I have two other moms Ooh. that and they doing it too. Um y'all need to uh and then maybe they can come on your channel and talk about um uh, what it's like okay um as yes. a matter of fact how long have you been homeschooling <sighs> my baby's 13 now so her, her entire life oh i love yes. it you know what uh i'm um i want to get with you after this um okay. this live or tomorrow because um i i have something uh, i want to ask you oh. but um just just so, a second just a second i got some boiling water on Lo. oh no worries turn the water off please See, y'all, if y'all have Thank something you. you want to share, anything that you're involved in, it doesn't have to be a business. If you have a YouTube channel, you so much. IG, right. anything, come on Sorry in and just, sh this is a, a comfortable, safe place. So if you want to come in, pop in, pop out, you're more than welcome to do that. All right. So you've been, you're a single yes. parent homeschooler yes. for about 13 years. Yes. And how many kids do you have? One what? shout out, shout out to all no, the homeschoolers that, that homeschool multiple children. Bless you, y'all are queens and kings. Oh my goodness! Oh no, sometimes goodness. those onlys it's hard because you know it's them and there's nothing to bounce it off, and you know, you're trying to find friends and things like that. So, I know yeah. sometimes with my one mom, she um, she has a daughter, 
And I have three boys and she would always have her daughters come over just so she can just, you know, she was always lonely in the house. Yeah. And she, she put up with all that boy energy, but once she got her <laughs> friends, she was like, peace out. <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> so yes. is there anything or any advice you want to share with us about um, how you can resurrect, you know, your homeschool, you know, it's, you know, almost May things are winding down and, um, People just want to end on a win, you know. It's like, okay, okay. how can I just savage the um, salvage the rest of this homeschool here? You have any um, suggestions? Um, now we we homeschool year round, so we okay. break we break whenever we see fit, whenever mm -hmm. it works for us. Yeah, um, and so this could be done anytime during the year or whatever your schedule, however your schedule is um, organized. But just take out some time and get to know your child. Just take some time just to get noticed. Forget all the, the arithmetic and the studies, mm -hmm. whatever that time may be. It may be a few hours, maybe a week or so, whatever that may be. Everyone's, everyone's family is a little different, but take out that time just to remind them how important they are, who they are, because they're at every de developmental stage, they are changing yes. so drastically. Absolutely. So it, it, And it can be hard to keep up with who they are and what they like and what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And we tend to get so as parents, as homeschoolers, I know I do. Cause I'm, look, <laughs> I don't play. <laughs> tend <to> get, <laughs> we tend to get so invested and I made yep. a lot of my own curriculum. So we mm -hmm. tend to get so invested in the curriculum. This has to be this way. This has to be this way. This now way. listen, Alicia, yes. not to, not to no, break no, no, your no, go ahead. Cause I can talk, talk. To your bill. But did y'all hear what she said? She makes her curriculum. She, mm -hmm. she a single homeschool mom with one kid and she got to do everything. And she's doing the curriculum. So let's just- The, let this the just only be... one I don't make is math. Yeah. yeah. And we use language arts grammar books. Okay. But everything For the else- most part, you're, you're putting everything yes. together. Yes. So you can do this. Okay? Oh, yes. You can do this. So I, that's why I'm so glad you came on because a lot of people think oh, I can't do this. It's, I don't, it's so many excuses where there's a will, there is a way. Now, Absolutely. Do, you, do you sell any of the things that you make for your kids? Cause if not, you need to. You need to well, to that's, that's, things. that's what this journey began, um, began with my business. That's where I am now. It's so I, I, make most of the curriculum. I love history. I call it out. We call it our story. I okay. love it. Yeah. And I have to say before I had my daughter, I can tell mm -hmm. you, I never thought I would be a teacher. Mm -hmm. I, said, I, don't, I don't have time for that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah. I never thought that I would be doing this never in a million years. But once I had my baby and I saw what was going on, yeah. <laughs> what was going on? I said, well, you it has to be done. It has to be done. And it got to a point where, because I've always loved researching and learning. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, I have a problem. I'm addicted. I'm <laughs> addicted. I have to be. My mind is so busy. Yeah. I have to be studying, learning, creating, doing something consistently. And now that she's at the age, she's 13, yeah. she's much more independent. So I'm not as involved in creating the lessons mm -hmm. and doing activities. I'm encouraging her to do her own thing. Yes. I have a little bit more free time on my hands. Yeah. But look, I can't turn it off. <laughs> I, can't I tell you, I wake up in the middle of the night, have my notepad, and I drop <laughs> But see, that's <laughs> that, that information. Yes. that's that create what we're talking about, that creativity flow. And especially because we get so embedded in teaching and mm -hmm. being moms and chauffeurs and cooks, we don't tap into that creative space that we all have. And so um, actually, that wasn't part of my CPR, but I'm going to add it to that. And that is why well, I have pursued personal interests, but I kind of did it in like a homeschool setting. But just outside of homeschool, one way to resurrect is to do something that you like to do where there's yes. that creative outlook. So listen, anytime you have anything that you want to promote, I want you to come on. And I actually, I actually have a number of places where you can go to sell, which okay. I need to do. I just, I just, actually, I wrote really two books. The, the, this first one I'm just promoting. The other one's in the wings. Um but 
there are a number of places where you can really get eyeballs and get your work out there and get it sold, make some income mm -hmm. and decide how far do you want to go in this homeschool world? Because as your daughter starts to age out, you know, you, you have to decide, do I want to be like a Julie Bogart where she's like a grandmother and she is still very much in the homeschooling world. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the, the older experts, you know, their grandparents and they're talking about homeschooling. And so, and I shout out to all of them. Like I have, I have their books, you know, I have all the oldies. Oh, oh man, <laughs> all the books. Hold on, my perfume is about to fall. Uh oh. Okay, let me hold on. All right. Um, it's reinventing yourself, and you know we need we need as many different kinds of people in the homeschool world. You know, yes. teaching or sharing ideas, especially the younger moms. Like, I'm fifty, so. I feel like I'm so, so old, but then I feel kind of young. Because oh, of stop that. Well, but you know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, those who were like in their 60s or their 70s, you know, they had a different kind of homeschool when they were doing it. And then we have our, our kind. And mm -hmm. I think that we have to kind of redefine homeschooling for us because we were getting that information from those older ladies. And so it's kind of that put that little identity on us. But we got to kind of just be like, you know what? This is how we do things this generation so we can teach the next one. So I think what you're doing is um, is amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank I like you. the advice about being creative and, you know, putting the brakes down and taking that break when you need it. Yes. Absolutely. Is there anything yes. you want to add? Um, and that kind of... The homeschooling journey led me to where I am now because with creating a majority of her lessons, mm -hmm. I had to essentially take all of the information, you know, take all the inf information, yeah. um, especially at different developmental uh, uh, stages and change it to where she could understand it, different concepts um, at her age level. Right. And, and to also make it into some sort of game. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. Everything was created into a game. See y'all, um, that had that's to be CPR fun. Word, that's the C, being creative. It had you to be make fun. it a game. Yes, and I love out. it. And I love it. I love it. I love it. So that's that's where hunting wisdom came from. It's trivia. Okay. It's games essentially, but oh, there it okay. encourages it encourages families, oh, individuals yeah. as well, but encourages families to work together trying to solve different trivia. Um, and they learn something. You you know, you learn something. Very interesting. Facts okay. and yeah. I'm gonna need a, uh I'm I'm gonna need to see a trivia game from you. Is there any subject focus that the trivia um I try to incorporate everything as much as possible? You know, I'm I'm an American, black American, so mm -hmm. that's the base of it. So but history trivia games. It's yes, it's history, it's okay. culture, it's okay. food, it's science, mm -hmm. it's math everything as much as possible because i through the games i really want to encourage everyone's individuality yeah. especially with families mm -hmm. how the how the you know the elderly members of the family can be crucial players in the game yeah. the little babies can yeah. be crucial players in the game i have information from you know bits of trivia from current uh events all the way back to as far as we can go, you know, in history and just a variety of different subjects. So everyone can have a role. And more importantly, as you play the game, as a family, you feel special. There's a lot of nostalgia in it. I'm an 80s baby. You feel special yeah. when you when you know the answer to something. Yep. And then maybe a family member say, oh, hey, grandma, I didn't know you knew that. Oh, what's that about, grandma? And they can encourage, you know, family bonding. Especially when it's something that the kids are into and then they find out, wait a minute, grandma, you did this too. Like, yeah, you're so you go. Of my yes. Stuff. So you yes. get there are multi layers of learning in that yes. in addition yes. to the, the the character trait of you know family bonding, building that yes. family unit together. So I think that's wonderful. Uh, when you're ready to sell that, I want you to come back on here and uh and talk about that okay. and um you know what's well, on my youtube channel <laughs> it's on yeah. my YouTube. all the well, information everyone, there 
um put your link to your channel in the yes. um in the chat so everyone can right. go and support. I... if i remember i'll put it in the description when the live is over um actually you touched Ooh. on the, how do i the, do that i'm new to this y'all bear with me um so can you go to the comment mm -hmm. section oh i see private chat comments there we go Oh, oh you can do private and then i'll put it in actually oh, well, i can, right, I can answer I into the it. comments let me see yeah you can chat with me privately and i'll i'll copy and paste the link and then i'll put it in the comment section okay i awesome. think right. i think and i'm the only me. one that will be able to have the link be available it might you might be considered spam but try it first oh i okay. see but no try it first because i could be wrong now what so while um Alicia does that. Um, the second part, the P in the CPR, I have was your passion. And that was integrating personal interest into the curriculum. And the main thing um, that I did with my, my family, now I have boys and they love video games. And I, well, basically technology. And so I incorporated games into the learning. So it's not just mindless um, consumption of technology so what you want to do is, and i have a list i need to um, do a video on it a uh, hold on video ideal um publish list of educational video or tech sites and i have them for all subjects okay so this is great i mean and it's for all grade levels elementary middle and high school free to pay but there's a variety out there something is bound to work for you you only need one just to get you started okay you only need one that your child um likes um to get it started so uh one thing that my kids really love when they were littles in elementary school was um and i don't even know if they if it's probably a different name. It was called Story. I want to say Story Builder. Oh, I forget. But I'll find it because I've made a, a, a playlist. And so they'll write like a backstory for their favorite character. And then they go into Story Builder. And it, now they have AI to do it. But it will create all like the background. Like say if you were doing like, like the three little pigs. But the wolf was the good guy. And... The grandma was a bad guy, whatever. But it would do the background, and all you would do is just put your your little information on each page. Oh yeah. And it, it would put it in book form, and you print it out, and you just staple it, and you have your own book. So you can use technology um, wisely. Um, and since a lot of kids, you know, this is the generation of tech kids, you know, they'll be drawn to that. So that's something to. Um, to keep in mind so that's so we have the creative part we have the p the passion part you know find out what your child likes go explore that you got a whole bunch of kids that's even better because you got something to keep y'all going for the whole month and then the next month you know it's um one child loves horses another child likes teenage mutant ninja turtles whatever just play to each child's interest you don't have to go out and buy anything like with um alicia you can make a game a lot of things you can do guys you can put game generator in google say um fortnite game well not fortnite let's see um plant versus zombies game generator and you'll have so many um results coming back it could be uh, making a connect for game generator um it could be um a memory game game creator and then all you do is you print it but there are so many different kinds of games that you can make just on things that you're interested in so keep that passion re you know ignite that passion so your kids can really you know they they're in a rut so you want to get them out of a rut okay mm -hmm. and then the r for cpr and i'll come back to you alicia is revitalizing so taking something old and making it new again you know it's like um let me ask you this alicia remember because you're you're probably around not close to my age but close enough remember when we used to wear jeans and then the trend was to cut the jeans um off like right at the maybe the mid thigh and then you would sew the legs and it would be a purse and you put a strap on it and so the jeans oh, oh no oh my god i don't I was, remember 
I was in middle school. That was the biggest. Ah, that sounds cool. You would take jeans and then you know, right where the little butt part was, you would cut the jeans across, and then you would that's when people were sewing, and then you would sew the bottoms up, and then you would take a strap and sew it, you know, the, the back part, you put one strap here and the other strap here. It would be like a crossbody and it would be a purse. So one one side of the leg, you know, might be like, you know, your little girly stuff and whatever, whatever. <laughs> and then the other would be your makeup and stuff like that. But, you know, revitalizing, taking something and making it um, new again. Is there anything you yeah. want to add about how you can, like, you know, revive your homeschool? Um, not only take time to, you know, to, to get to know your kids, but make sure, make sure you set aside some, some, some time. Bella, I'm getting some time. Make sure you set aside some time to just take some time for yourself. Mm. If, if yeah. you know, if you need to let the cousins or whoever or let them let them play video games for a few hours so that yep. you can relax relax well, do something something, something mm -hmm. so that you can reboot and revitalize yourself that is crucial yeah. because I, I i go hard <laughs> i go hard and sometimes i'm not even aware i don't even realize how um how exhausted i am <laughs> Because you're, you're in it and you get so yes. used to being in it you don't know how to pull back and yeah, that's it key. Can be and some of it is it becomes guilt well let me mm -hmm. get this done or let me finish this new stack of history cards mm -hmm. you know, yep you don't know how to um to turn it off because that's just you're just so used to it so yep. you need the key is what is the trigger that that knocks on your head and says, OK, girl, stop. You're doing too much. We don't have that. You know, for some people, it could be your best friend. It could be a mom, a spouse, a partner that's like, OK, girl, you know, you might need to book a spa treatment or you might just need to go out for a walk. Mm -hmm. If you're, you don't have somebody who recognizes when you need that break, it's all on you. It's best to schedule it in. Yeah. So every Sunday night from four to six is mom time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or once a month, I'll go get a massage or it's a little spa treatment or, you know, find whatever, whatever appeals to you. If it's, especially if it involves money, you know, well, she not, not with this economy, but if, you're, <laughs> yeah. if you are blessed, maybe you go out <laughs> once a month, especially if you got like five, six, seven, eight, 10, 20 kids, you need a massage, you know? So you know, but you have to schedule Ugh. that in. Bless y'all. Yes. But Ooh. you have to schedule that in, y'all, because you can't rely on yourself to be like, oh, my God, I need a break. Because when you do realize you need a break, you didn't already cussed out five kids. <laughs> you didn't already the phone on your mom. You didn't already scratch the car, zooming out the driveway to get to uh, karate. But then it's too late. Yep. When you Fell realize, asleep on the desk. <laughs> yes. It's too late. So if you if you pencil that in, start with something free and easy. I my atomic habits book, that book club, you have to make it easy, you have to make it conspicuous where you can see it, <clears throat> and you have to make it satisfying. So maybe it's maybe your guilty pleasure is Starbucks coffee or you know, some kind of food, whatever. Hey, on Friday night from seven to ten or after seven, it's I tell my kids, I am the upstairs is closed. <laughs> I say after seven because I'm upstairs. Well, in my, upstairs, I mean, like you hear my little diva den. I say, at seven o'clock, upstairs is closed. Then no, don't come and bother me. So that's my, and mm -hmm. I, and I have that built in so I don't have to remember to take a break. So you want to build in something every week. Find a day that will be less stressful for you to do that. So you can commit to it and then decide what's the satisfying part. Are you going to read some trashy novel? Are you going to eat something? Are you going to drink something? Are you going to smoke something? What's that <laughs> thing for real? We're we being real. What's that thing that's going to make you want to look forward to having that me time? So that's part of Atomic Habits where it says, look, I keep it here to remind myself. Why yep. can't you see it? This is my, oh, here we go. You can't see it because of my green screen, but you have to make it obvious, meaning, you know, you got to see where it is. Otherwise, you won't even um, 
think about it. You have to make it attractive. So make it something you want to do. Make it easy. If you got to call five people, if you got to move furniture around, if you got to do all that, you're not going to do it. So you got to make it easy. And then it has to be satisfying. Okay. So sit down and think about what you like. How easy is it to get to it, to con- to get it, to consume it? Um, where are you going to put it? If I'm saying I'm going to have this mug of vodka and juice every Friday night, okay, so I need to have that bottle with my favorite little cup maybe sitting on the counter d- throughout the week. So it's always a constant reminder. So, okay, it's Friday. Let me grab this and this so I can go upstairs. So you need that visual reminder, some kind of reminder so you can go and every week you have that me time, okay, to revitalize you. I don't know if you ever, did you ever see uh, the three body problem on Netflix? Three body problem. It's about um, Mm -hmm. aliens. We made contact with, did anybody see that show? No, I haven't seen that. That sounds interesting. It's it's really good, but, uh, and I'm not going to give it away. Oh, I might give it away if I tell this part. All right. <laughs> Spoiler you need to reconstitute yourself is what I'm saying. Reconstitute yourself, you know, any way uh, that you can. Now, when it comes to your kids, sometimes, let me see. I'm going to be real. Okay, so when my child had like 30 hours of therapy every week and I was just trying to get through the week... I had all the fancy curriculum. Y'all see all the curriculum I had? I had all, <laughs> all the planning and everything. But in the end, I was giving this to my kids even more because I knew they were going to be exposed to reading, writing, math, science, whatever. And um, it was something they can take to the office. Or you know, mm-hmm. if I was doing therapy, I knew that you know my oldest kid was going to get something. He was going to get some kind of learning that day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if I wasn't feeling well. Y'all, I ain't got to explain nothing. Yep. I'll grab one of those Evan Moore books. You can find your thing, your go-to. I just like Evan Moore, which is kind of pricey, but there are, that's, that that would be a private live on how you can, uh, <laughs> yeah. but, um, but find the one thing that your child can grab and just, they're still getting educated but they're out your hair. You want something reliable. Um, um, we have something called expiration time. Oh, what's that? It's, it's expiration time is essentially, we, we had a list years ago. We had a list. It's, it's changed. It's shrunk. It's grown. Um, but it's essentially, it's a list of uh, things that she loves to do mm-hmm. and we both love to do. And sometimes we just need a break. I said, go find something there. And if it's something new, she has to run it by me first. If it's oh, something did that... You, did you say expiration or exploration? Exploration. Okay. Oh, that's a great, yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. Yep. We're big on crafts. So right now it's... There you go. It's clay. So she she's in the clay, in the dollhouses. So. And that's and that's how you, you know, that's a new teaching method, right? Because mm-hmm. um, I think, I forget what book I read. It was one of those 1800s books. Uh, it talked about how at most your child should have two toys at the very mm-hmm. most because the world is a toy for your child. Mm-hmm. And when your child has less things, they create more things to become yes. things that they like or want yes. to play with. And that is really true. When I um, took screen time away from my kids, they had a, they rediscovered things in the house. Mm-hmm. And we don't, you know, if you can, you know, once you get past the, the the teeth sucking and the eye rolling and the protest. I, look, I wish you would. I know. I know, right? I know. But once Girl, you're gonna go grab that book. <laughs> oh goodness. Once they get past that day, they're gonna go off, like you said, and explore and find something. Yep. And it's helpful if you have things already ready to go. You ain't gotta yes. get a lot of stuff. The dollar store would be your best friend, right? Mm -hmm. Or just uh, go to the library, those free book sales or those 25 cent book sales. Toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls. Exactly. Paint them up, make a little village. (laughs) 
let me tell you, and my kids will, crazy. will kill me, but they take every Amazon box, every um, there you go. water bottle, mm -hmm. and the hot glue. And my kids are 17, 15, and 13, 13, and they still do this. They have literally made a city. Nice. And they, do, oh. they, do they do battles. Well, it's like nice. war. They do battles. They take everything in the house. Like, I'm afraid to set something down because in five minutes, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not lying. Okay, this is my all of LA. Now, my husband <laughs> bought this at Costco and it was too much. This thing is like two years old. I'm like, I don't need five bottles of this. They last a long time. <laughs> so I put it down. And I noticed my son, this was last year. He was like, Mom, it looks empty. Do you need this? I was like, Yeah, there's still oil in here. He said, okay. The next day, it was gone. I was like, Jay, where is my oil of LA? Oh, that white <laughs> bottle? Oh, mom is perfect because of the hole. Because there's a hole in it to, to, but you know what? Because they didn't have no screen time. So, and they've been doing that for years. So, uh, so revitalizing awesome. these new teaching methods, the teaching method could be your child teaches himself or herself mm -hmm. by just getting out there and doing something. Okay. So that's my CPR. I have some more stuff, but I know I'm long winded. The other things I wanted to talk about was just, you know, getting outside of the house. Yes. Um, okay. So being a homeschooler, I ain't gonna lie. I'm outside of LA, billion people around here. It's a big homeschool community. And even still, I get lonely. Mm. Um, because you know, you, you have friends, but we all get caught up in our lives. Yes. And especially when your kids get older and they have activities. So you really never really, really see your friend unless you make a conscious effort to say let's go have some coffee you know saturday oh i want to but my my daughter has volleyball game mm -hmm. okay when it comes to the volleyball game not really but if i want to hang out with you i'll go to your daughter's your volleyball game so yeah yep. yep. <laughs> my yeah, so friends are my baby's friends parents yeah. yeah so yeah um it gets lonely and when you're just kind of stuck in the house or when you do go out, you kind of just let your kids run off or whatever, and you, you know, you still kind of to yourself. It can be really um, lonely. Um, the friend I told you about that I was on the phone with, um, I hadn't talked to her for a while, and we 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 spoke for like hours basically. I'm like, girl, I gotta get ready for uh, mm -hmm. this live this live I have, but I didn't realize how starved I was, how starved I was. She's not a homeschooler um for just adult interaction mm -hmm. and so um and i have a writer's group but it's online so it's not really the same thing because for me i need that in-person interaction so getting out into the community um is really key now i i'm in this business cohort and so i met two weeks ago and I didn't realize how thirsty I was for attention. <laughs> I was talking to people like I was like laughing real hard, like I was on a first date with somebody. I was, I was like, "Girl, you look ridiculous," because I was just so starved for personal in person interactions, mm. community, like community. So yeah. uh, I was in a rut. So when you're feeling like, "Oh my God, I'm about to burn out," or I'm just trying to get through this day or this week. You know, think about what you like. Go on, meet up, see if there's a group somewhere. Put the word out to your friends. Go on Google and just try to find something that has nothing to do with homeschooling, mm -hmm. nothing to do with education, and just with, well, with, with the exception of what you're doing because you're being creative. You're making the cars, the trivia. So that's, you like that. So that's different. Mm -hmm. If that's a creative outlet, you go with that because you can always find crafters, you know, because, you know, you're, you're still being creative. So you can, someone could be knitting over here and, you know, doing their craft and you just make little cars. It's just being in that atmosphere. Right. Yeah. So does anybody have any suggestions in the, uh, in the chat on ways you can revive your homeschool? Because Alicia gave you some really, really real world examples. Like you can take that and just get started on it tonight or tomorrow. Does anybody have any um, any suggestions? Let us know. Um, so the last thing that I would say for the CPR and reviving your um your homeschool is I 
ain't saying quit, but there's something to be said about homeschooling year round. Now it might sound scary and I'm going to let Alicia <laughs> end with this um, to wrap this up. I know, um, remember my busy bees and me? I don't know if you remember that YouTube channel. Uh, Erica from My Busy Bees and Me. She was a sister. She was in the military. She was a year-round homeschooler. I don't think she's active on YouTube anymore. She was a year-round homeschooler. I think they did five weeks on, three weeks off, or six weeks on, two weeks off. It was something like that, but it was year-round. And, um, and that allowed her to build in those breaks so mm. she could decompress her kids could decompress and then you come back stronger you know it's like when we're in a marriage or a relationship you go off on a trip for a week and you come back and you know, oh my god i missed you so much <laughs> you know leaving the toothpaste you know cap off doesn't bother me for the first couple of days you know leaving the toilet seat up doesn't bother me for the first couple of days and then reality kind of comes back in. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like the homeschool so you you get away from your kids you're like look all right so y'all got one week off or two weeks off and you can give them like a a framework and i'll be curious to see how you did this alicia where you're like hey okay these are play these are online places to go to or books to read or crafts to do or projects so you know choose one choose none choose something and then just check in with me throughout the day throughout the week i'm gonna do my thing Mm-hmm. So how did how did you do your um your year round with your breaks? Like now this this is this is gonna throw some folks off, but right, I stopped so I stopped creating a, a schedule. You um, stopped creating a schedule. I stopped creating a schedule. Oh, so you um, kind of a little unschooling? I, I guess I guess you would call it that. Mm-hmm. My my daughters. I'd say her her most challenging subject is math. So mm-hmm. she has to have um, certain grade levels done by a certain time. It's okay. up to her now that she's older to essentially, I still stay on top of her, but essentially schedule when she's going to have that done. And if, mm-hmm. if it isn't, there's repercussions. Um, yeah. But even still, she's still, a, she's still ahead because she's, Within the next couple of months, she'll be entering 10th grade and she's 13. So she's with that, she's still a little ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, now we take our times off. It could be a couple of days. It could be uh, a couple of weeks. I think mm-hmm. two or three weeks is the longest we've taken off. Okay. Um, and we have time together. I say, what do you want to do together? Mm-hmm. What do you want to do on your own? What do yeah. you want to do with your friends or family? <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's it. Let me know. And we just we just get it done. We really try to be uh I guess I guess unstructured and let it let it yes. go with the flow. Yeah. And definitely spend time relaxing. Um I I you know she's 13, so she's going mm-hmm. through her thing. And yeah. I said, I said, this is one of the most important times of your life because you are developing the, the most, you know, from mm-hmm. time when you were a baby and now you know <laughs> as a teenage young lady. Yeah. You're developing the most. So make sure you take the time for your Mm -hmm. self-care. Make sure you take time. I let her sleep. Yes. I know. I know everyone gets on the kids and sleep too much. I let her sleep. Um, She she, she needs it. She's growing. This is a huge. Do you ever notice, um, and sorry to cut you off again, Mm -hmm. but when we were growing up, we would go school, then the summertime, outside playing whatever whatever and then when the fall came that's when people had their growth spurts mm. you know you come back and, oh my god you know you grew or your hair was longer yeah uh, but the thing was especially for the boys um that's when you saw the major growth spurts and i was reading this book by ariana huffington called sleep and it it talked about how beneficial it was especially mm-hmm. for teens right when uh, like you said, when they're turning 13 and up, they need more sleep because their yeah. body's changing so much. Yeah. So I would let my oldest one, because my other ones, they would just be up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> they can sleep in. However, in, well, except for math, he always had math in the morning, but then he can go back to bed right after that. But he really needed that sleep. You know, he would be groggy the whole day if he was up. Um, 
you know, eight or nine o'clock. He just needed more sleep, especially, mm-hmm. especially for boys, because, you know, they're, they're growing more than girls. But yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, yeah. We would be unstructured depending on the time of the year and the season that we were in. When I was doing a lot of therapy, we had to, everything had to be unstructured. It was, I call it genius hours. You just kind of mm-hmm. follow what you were into. And I would just kind of look over your shoulder. I always made sure they read and they did math. Everything else I was okay with, especially when I had these ever more books. <laughs> but um, I, I like that. I see that Steph, she um, homeschools year round. Hey, Steph, Steph. Wanna, if you ever want to come on and talk about how you do that, we would love to hear um, your wisdom on that. Yes. But yes. Um, I, I love what you're doing with your daughter. It's um, you. That's the difference with. Because you have, it's like when you have your first child and everything is so important. <laughs> oh my God, you, we have to get this or don't eat that off the floor. And we're, just, <laughs> we're so rigid and so, because we've been so indoctrinated, we don't have any experience. And so we're just yeah. taking everybody's you know advice. And then by your second child, you're like, we're we going to be okay. That's how yeah. I feel about like unschooling, whatever, whatever label you want to, Put on an unstructured mm-hmm. whatever, uh, people will be like, oh my God. And it's like, you know, there's structure in the unstructured, meaning my kid can't just go outside and be like, all right, Ma, I'll see you tonight. Or yeah, I'll play Minecraft all day. It's not even like that. It's like I, you know, get a little something done mm-hmm. or just show me what you're doing. Show me, show me what your plans are. Okay. Exactly. If they exactly. change, just let me know. And then I trust you enough to engage yourself, occupy yourself, being comfortable with yourself. You got people who can't stand being by themselves for more than five minutes. They need That's a problem. Food. That's a huge problem. problem. You got to love can't. yourself, boo. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be able to sit, got to be able to sit with yourself with all your yes. flaws, embrace them, work on them. That is crucial. Self-respect, self-love. Especially for girls. Especially for those girls, right? Yes, absolutely. So I think everybody should have a time where you let your kids have that self-exploration. So I love what you're doing with your daughter because just sitting sitting still with yourself. I had a, real quick, I had a girlfriend. uh, One of my, well, she can't say girlfriend nowadays. It means something totally different. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yes. My own girl in college. She had, when she was dating someone and she felt like, okay, it's kind of waning, she would hurry up and find another guy to date. So she always had someone to call and leave her voicemails. So she couldn't go like a whole week between boys. She always had to have somebody that she could call or that someone that called her. And she would always look at me weird because I just be, you know, I was always a a book reader or into, um, uh, some esoteric stuff but i would be in my Mm -hmm. own world but i would be fine with it i didn't have to like go places or have someone call me i I was fine being by myself she had to be in the company of people whether on the phone or in person and that came from a lack of just sitting still getting to know yourself and not being afraid to do something independent of other people so I think that's great what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And I started, I actually, her her first year of kindergarten, well, I started homeschooling. I said, as soon as she can, she can use the restroom well and she can walk, we're going we to get to some shapes <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> so about one-ish. Um, <clears throat> but uh, five years old, kindergarten. Mm-hmm. Well, she did a little preschool school thing. She had a little, you know, preschool thing online. But the five-year-old, she did uh, K-12. She did K-12. Okay. And it was just too much. Yeah. It was too much. I said, she's five. I said, this is, yeah. this structure is for an adult. I, I, yeah, I've seen it. My girlfriend, she used to be a city? teacher. She used to be a teacher and she would cry. She was like, this is ridiculous. No. Yeah. So we shouldn't even be sitting that long. I know. No. Yeah. So that's what inspired me to start my own curriculum. We okay. did, we did, we finished that. We actually, we powered through and we finished the case K through 12 early because you could yeah. just to get it out of the way, yeah. out of the way. Yeah. I said, it's, I said, well, she can't even get outside with all these tasks. Yep. Cause that's people in business 
creating something for the bottom line and not taking into account you have little humans with short attention spans mm -hmm. and that you, like you said they they're not built for that and so that that was the early the early days oh it was horrible for the young ones i mean mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we come a long way, but that yes, was your yeah. your impetus of just like let me get let me make stuff so we can be on our own and you know my never child, look back. <laughs> yeah, never look back. All right, so is there anything you would like to add? Um, always feel free um, to come on to the lives. Okay. I don't know if I can make it Fridays. If I do, it will be a last minute notice just because. Okay. Um, my son has a uh, football like in Orange County and it's like an hour and a half away mm -hmm. and we have carpool and sometimes somebody can't make it and they'll be, Oh, can you at the last minute? So it's always something. Oh, you know? So yeah. I can, I'll, I like the Fridays. Does the Fridays work for you guys in the chat? Cause I know back in the day, I, I used to have like 150 people. Um, oh, wow. I would go late, like seven. I would do seven. And then when my son started playing varsity football, his games were Friday at seven. So I had a whole year where I couldn't do them on Fridays at seven. So um, uh, I might bump it to six. I might just try a different time each each time, six o'clock, 6.30, um, just to see. But yeah, I definitely would love you to come on. If you want to yeah. bring your materials with you, um, do that. And um, I, I actually don't have... Um, the physical, well, I do have physical materials, but that's for the game. The, the mini trivia is on my YouTube page okay, and Facebook guess. and, uh, all that's those okay. other social medias, but no, that's <laughs> on YouTube. No, whenever, whenever, whenever you're but ready, um, if you I, like, I, I can, I can, uh, I can spit some, some trivia and yeah, if you want to do that, let's you know, uh, let's see what you got going on oh, here. Oh, let's I'll give see. you something. I'll give you something right now. Let me pull up my little list. I'm on my pages, I have, I have over 150. I'm starting to lose count. Oh lord! Of mini Girl, trivia, you, you, you have to make that make money for you. That's that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, I'll give you this one. Um, okay. Now the mini trivia's they're in common. So what does the group have in common? Okay. This one is Yogi. It's four things in common. Well, okay. a group of four. All right. Y'all being first, tested right now. Okay. Let's the, go. The, the, first, the first item is Yogi. The bear? The okay. Look, I, let me be quiet. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me give him all. The first one is Yogi. <laughs> the second item is Honey. Mm -hmm. The third item is Atticus. And the fourth item is Usher and Alicia. What does this group have in common? Okay. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Atticus, Yogi, Atticus, Honey, Honey, Usher, Usher, and Alicia. Alicia, who? What's Alicia? Uh, Usher and Alicia. Oh, is that a woman? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, they're not all food. They're um, they're all organic beings in some way or another. Um, they're not four letters or five letters. Um. Yogi, I'm thinking the bear. Mm, mm. Okay. The, uh, listen, I, I'm, I'm gonna give you a hint. Dive okay. a little deeper into Yogi. Okay, Yogi T, Yogi, like the Yogi who does. Mm, da, 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 oh, da, da, you know you had it. Yogi the bear. Dive a little okay. deeper into Yogi Bear. Okay. Um, what I say at the Yogi Bear? Wait, not Yogi Bear. Yeah, yeah. Dive a little okay. deeper into Yogi Bear. Re okay, okay. Yogi the bear. Room. Yogi the bear likes honey. Um, Atticus, I'm thinking of Atticus from uh, what's that book? That classic book? I know that's not Ooh, it. Oh, there you um, go. You got it. Uh, wait, was it Atticus in To Kill a Mockingbird? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, okay, bird, honey, bear, I don't know, usher, um, ushering in the honey girl. I don't know. Help me out. How many hints do I um, get? I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you another clue. Um, okay. let's see here. Usher and Alicia, I'm pretty sure they performed at the Super Bowl this year. I'm not into sports. I'm pretty sure they performed this oh, year. Oh, Alicia Keys. You mean Alicia Keys? Yes. Okay, Alicia Keys. Okay. Usher and Alicia, Atticus uh -huh. from To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay. Um. Oh, famous people? No. 
You have Yogi Bear. Let's Do y'all in the chat? Do y'all know anything in the chat? Let me know. Give me a hint in the chat. <laughs> <if you know. laughs> for, let's see. I'll give you a hint that will help with Atticus. Um, okay. Think of Atticus, the story, and some of the cast members. <laughs> I mean, so, some of the characters in Atticus, The Killer Mockingbird. What was that girl's name? What was that girl's name? Oh, I'm blanking. Hold on. You didn't say anything about a, a lifeline. <laughs> no, lifeline. No, listen, listen, my my YouTube, because I do a live, I'll do a live trivia. Now, okay. my YouTube live trivia is, is pretty simple. It's just a trivia. I also have a more advanced one on Zoom. Is where, this the advanced one? Well, no. Now, these, these mini trivia, in common trivias, they will gain points for the actual games if you act, if you get them correct you get points toward the actual game they are also okay. clues in the game okay so all right so give me some more hints and then once i get it then for okay. the next one i can start getting my mind in the right frame of mind of, of okay thinking. okay um let's see here all right think of the characters from yogi bear uh-huh the little dog who else? The park ranger. Oh. Uh-oh, park ranger? You smile. Um, <laughs> it's park not related to this one, but okay. go ahead. Think of the characters. Okay. Uh, uh, it's the park ranger, the dog that talks slowly, Yogi Bear. Um, who's the one that's always trying to steal the honey? Um, no, that's Yogi always trying to take the honey. Yogi's always trying to steal the, the, the picnic basket. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. Um, he has a friend. Boo boo. Oh, yes, he's a boo boo. Boo boo. Come, girl, come help me. Okay. Okay. It's no, forgive I'm me, I mispronounced it. But Kamika was it, is it Kamika? Forgive me, mispronouncing name. But she she got it. It's boo boo. It's boo. Okay. It's boo boo from Yogi. It's uh -huh. Honey Boo Boo the show. It's Atticus okay. Boo. Boo Radley from Atticus, oh, the Killer Mockingbird, and, and Alicia. My boo. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Was that fun and challenging? <laughs> and it's a, it's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of everything. Oh man, want... I like that. And look, now it's gonna make me go back and reread the Killer Mockingbird. Um, there you go. You see, <laughs> see, my job is done. My job oh, is like done. That. Oh my God, that must take you forever to get all those clues Listen, and find the connection amongst them all. I love it. I tell you, I wake up in the middle of the night. I wake up in the middle of the night with my notepad and I jot down random things. That would be just, a good Zoom. That's oh, just like four or five yes. people on a Zoom. Yes. That would be fun. That's, that's my more advanced game because with the Zoom, it's you not you, only... Kimika, you're going to be on my team. Yes. <laughs> there you go, Kamika. Wait, wait. Um, I, should say, I should say I'm gonna be on your team since you knew the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Zoom also is not just the trivia, but there's challenges as well, and the cash payout is higher. With what? YouTube, it's, it's simpler because YouTube is just a chat, the live chat. Yeah. So I can't really see people, and there's a high likelihood that uh, someone will be googling to try to get the correct answer. Yeah, but like what, me. whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but that's much simpler. <laughs> Where with Zoom, I can see everyone. I can see the teams. I yeah. know no one's being funny or cheating or anything. Yeah. And um, they can complete the challenges, which sometimes can be physical challenges. And it's all mm -hmm. family safe. I encourage everyone to come in. Now, I have it where a single player, I'm so excited. I haven't played a game yet, but I'm so excited. <laughs> I have it where anyone can play as a team. It could be a single individual. Mm -hmm. Or it can be a group of a family of 10 or a whole basketball yeah. team as one team. I can imagine, let's say one person beats a team of like 10. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine? I'm so you, excited. Yeah, so you excited. got buffs out there. They they know a <laughs> yes. lot. You yes. You have to be kind of well-rounded. Round, so, you know, your entertainment, your sports, your mm -hmm. literature, you yep. know, your, your uh, current events, you know, that I think that tends would tend to help out um you to come on top 
Yeah. I love that. So yes. we're, we are almost an hour and a half in. I'm going to wrap this up. <laughs> yes, but, um, thank, thank you. you. Thank you to Alicia. Alicia or Alicia? Ali Alicia. Alicia. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you were saying Alicia Keys, like Alicia your name. Alicia Keys? I used to wear my hair like her as a kid. <laughs> I love her. I love her. I love her too. Uh, she's something else. Um, so um, if you guys want to come on, you see how easy it was. If you have something you want to promote, if you're another or a fellow YouTuber, um, come on in. Let us know where you are. If you want to share your wins, um, please, you're open and welcome to do that. Also, um, before we close out of here, I haven't given you guys a freebie in a while. It's because I've been trying to learn all this stuff you know, with the uh, marketing of a book. So that's kind of taken my time. I had a six week author, author boot camp. So um, I'm just trying to get Ooh, all that stuff together. Six yeah. This, and I needed every, every bit of it because when you indie publish, I might do a video on that for those who are interested in writing a book and publishing it. You make more money than if you go the traditional route, the split is bigger in your favor. <clears throat> okay. But yeah, there's so much. But now that I'm done with my second homeschooling book, um, I feel like um, I'm in a groove now. And so now, now I can get back to doing lives and I'm um, sharing with you guys. So I appreciate that. Um, again, this is my new... Um, Oh, I can't talk and do that at the same time. This is my new book. Um, it is or will be on pre-order next week. I will also be looking for ARC readers. Um, I will give more information about that on Monday, how to be an ARC um, reader and what that entails. So um, if, let me put you back on. Is there anything you want to leave us with before we get out of here, Alicia? Um, I have been going live daily. I'm trying to get contestants. I, um, I, I have to say, I have to say, what time do you I, go live? right now I'm, I've been going live just about all day. <laughs> trying to get all day? Yes. I'm actually going to start another live here in a few minutes. Um, okay. I, y'all subscribe really new and put to, your notifications on, subscribe to her and put your notifications on. So you know every time she goes live, which is a I, lot. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of new to social media as I didn't have a lot of these accounts. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that's gonna sound strange, but I'm just like starting these accounts and whatnot. So I that's, think that's I fun, think everyone yeah. thinks it's like um like a scam or something, which I understand because I keep getting scam attacked. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll get the newer accounts definitely. Yes, yes. Yeah. I get messages every day. Hey, how you doing? You want to buy this? I'm like, mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna try to stop by and um, catch it and, and participate in the game. Okay. I encourage you guys to support a sister, support a woman Thank who's trying to, to do something in the world, Thank and um, and good luck with that. And uh, thank you for sharing your stories. And you I are really welcome. Thank you for having me on. Out. And there's a cash prize, folks. There's a cash prize. Y'all get some money because y'all trying to buy Help curriculum. the community. Y'all trying, trying to buy to curriculum. Y'all better go get some money. Yeah. Gas is high. You know, gas is six ninety nine yeah. and seven twenty four here in LA. Look, I need to be playing for some cash. Yeah, and get hey, get your kids. I'm sure they know a lot of the trivia that I oh, have. Oh, sure. yeah, your get kids. Your kids. Money. They oh, let let them earn some money. Idea. Let them earn yeah, some money. Can you imagine next. how good they'll feel if they get you know some of the answers right, or if you are getting win. paid, getting paid to do something right. educational. Steph, right. you coming on next, Steph? <laughs> don't, don't try to hide. You coming on next? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get out of here. Um, I will be in touch. Um, what's the best way if anybody wanted to reach out to you? Uh, Alicia, what's the best way? Do you have a, a email address or a DM on Instagram? I have my email address. Just a second. Okay. Then I'll pop in the chat. Do, 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 do. You guys get that? Yeah. Yes. Cali is crazy. And listen, it's even more expensive in like the really rich areas of town, like Hancock Park and uh, Beverly Hills. That gas might be at $8 for all I know. I don't go out to LA. I, I'm like, oh, that's too much of the jungle for me. I'm going to stay right over here in my little town. But <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's no joke out here. 
Thank you, Gavin Newsom. Uh, nuisance. So, um, you guys, um, if you want to reach out to, especially if you happen to um, have contacts for board game makers or something like that, reach out to her and yes. see, see what you can I've, do. I've actually, oh, look, it says, <clears throat> um, so this comment has failed. The comment failed to post. This you know what? Put it in the private chat right. and then I'll copy and paste it and put it in um, the big chat. Got you might have to do that. Because I think the at sign, um, it's going to, like, I have everything, every restriction on my my streaming yeah. service. And so I think it might think you're spam. That could be it. I see. Oh, there we are. All right. Private. <clears throat> um, that's my email. The email. I also have. I can show this, I can show this email. Oh, yeah, oh, go ahead. Cool. Yeah, go okay. ahead. That's, you know, go ahead. That's for specifically for the channel. I mean, for the channel and the business. Um, but on my got it on my YouTube channel in my channel description. Your, your email is long. What is that? Jackson dash R. Oh, wait. Oh, that's not right. That's not right. That's my last name. Oops. Oh, so just after the hyphen. After the hyphen. All right. Hold Why on. do you let do me, that? Let Oops. me. Let me fix that. Let's the email is just are you hunting wisdom at, at gmail.com. Okay, hold on. Let me fix it here. Are you and hunting? my other information in my channel description on my YouTube page? It has that email, it has my website, my Facebook, um, my phone numbers on my Facebook. I'm look, I'm out okay. there. You are available. I, I am available. anytime. Don't be shy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so thank and you. Thank you for that. You guys go check her out. Uh, um, if you have any homeschool questions, I'll stay here for the next 10 minutes. If you guys have any questions, um, any comments about any of the flip throughs I've been talking about, if you have any suggestions, you got me for the next 10 minutes and um, we can do that before we um, wrap it up. At least I will be in contact with you. Definitely. I want to um, get your um, input on some things. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, Hopefully I'll see you on the next here. slide. Thank you so much. It's been a You're pleasure. Welcome, thank you. Yes, All right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Let's see. And kick from the studio. What does that mean? Okay. Okay, I don't know how to. Okay, she turned off. All right, so, all right, that was wonderful. That was fun. I know I talked a lot. I should have let her talk more, but um, I'm learning <laughs> as an interviewer. All right, so if you guys have any questions, I remember um, looking at some of the comments. Uh, I forget who it was. She was asking, hey, I have an older child, seventh grade, eighth grade. At what level should I start them for writing and rhetoric? Okay. If you have an older child and you want to start them on a program where your child would be in the middle of the program, what can you do? Okay. So my advice, and this is what I did with my own child, um, was to start at the beginning. And this is strictly for writing and rhetoric, but this is a rule of thumb that you can do for other curriculum that has a series of books. And if your entry point is further along because of the age of your child, you can, you don't have to go to the very first book. You could probably go back a couple of books before their entry point for their age or grade level. And then there are lots of things you can usually cut out because your child is, you know, probably been exposed to other elements. So um, it's not, not, it's not like they're learning all new skills, right? So they can jump in at least one or two books before the book that they're at. And then um, you can do, depending on the breakup of the chapter, I need to, you know, I need to have a book where I can just show you how to do that. Do I have any English books here? Grammar. I got all grammar books and then a spelling book. We'll have to do another live on that because I can show you how to break up a curriculum when you need to get through it really quickly and when you just want to take your time with it, okay? And so there are lots of things where you can extend the learning or you can speed it up. All right, Steph says, I'm excited for your book. Can you do a live on AP classes? Girl, yes, because my son, he's got three right now. And I'm like, I cannot wait for May 13th to be done because it is, uh, uh, oh, 
Here's one. Okay, so for AP, there is this professor. It's here. It's on my phone. And my son loves him. Now, my son's doing AP um, American history, so A push. And I love, okay, okay, I have two, but let me just show you the first one. Uh, let's see, A push. Um, am I on YouTube? Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna pull it up because it's worth it. It is so well organized and it goes by, you know, chapter, section or something like that. Um, AP. Well, I say American history. Okay. Oh, let me just go into his um his folder. Okay, it's called Himmler's. Okay. Let me enlarge it. Okay. Let's see if you can hold on, take this off. I swear by this. Okay. Um, I don't know which AP your child is doing. Oh man, my green screen. Okay, you can see it. Himmler's history. I have one for um it's got calculus and what's the other class? History, math. Oh, what's your other class? What are all the subjects? Math, history. It's not he's not doing AP English because he had, um what's the other AP class? Hold on, let me look at my calendar because I have the test um on his, on my calendar. Okay. Now the thing with AP, when you are a homeschooler, the biggest problem, and I ran into this when my son was in middle school and I was looking, um, just looking ahead for AP classes. Hold on. It's May 11th. He's taking his 9, 10 and the 13th. So let's see. Oh, environmental science. Okay. You have to start early with AP and finding a location to take your APs because these high schools, they will not let you into their school because they're giving the test during class. So these public and high schools, good luck trying to get your child into those schools to take the AP. Now, I know umbrella schools, sometimes charter schools, they'll have um, access for you to um, take your APs there. I even know of one situation, I think this was in Iowa, where um, one of the parents got like certified or something to be able to administer the test. And then they rented the li the county library to do it. I, if I'm not mistaken, but that was many years ago. So your main thing with your AP classes and make it, it, that's just depending on if you want your child to take the exam at the end. If you just want your child just to take the class, just to take the class, just for the transcript, you don't have to worry about that. But if you want your child to take that test at the end, you're going to start, you're going to start needing to think about that immediately. Now, if you just want your child to just take that, I recommend, um, YouTube will be your best friend. I have found so many teachers on YouTube that, that they have taught for years. They are passionate about these subjects and they're organized. So I showed you Himmler's. Hopefully you can take a screenshot because let me show you how organized it is. So you can, if, you, if you're going to teach it yourself, you can kind of just watch his videos and then go teach. So let me show you. Um, I think he does. Yeah, he does um, government, economics, history. He might do some more. He does a lot of AP classes. Okay, so if you look, let me see if I can get that close enough. If you look at the yellow bar, okay, if I can get this to work with my green screen. You know what? Let me take a screenshot and then I'll just upload it. All right, so. Okay, so let me upload that real quickly and then I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. How am I doing on time? My juice. Okay, I got 62%. Okay, so let me pull this up and then I can show you. And so uh, he breaks it down by downloads. Boom, screenshot. Okay. Hold on, it's loading, guys. Okay. Let me remove. Okay, now I can't talk when I remove myself because it removes my audio. So I'll just be behind the screen. All right. So when you look at the yellow bar here, 
it's giving you your information, um, the time frame, and, and and it's like the chapters, and then he'll have like the chapters on here. Like you see here, unit eight, topic two. So it goes all in order. So you can sit down and go to the very first one when he first introduces all of that. And then look, oh, actually, I'm sorry. He actually has on his website, you can go there and download his syllabus. Like he shows you when he's teaching what, you know, topic, all of that. That is great. So I would start with him see if he teaches any of the classes you think you want your child to take and then move on for there. Um, for, let's see, the other ones for calculus. My, my son doesn't really do it for calculus. He's pretty solid in that. Um, and then the envir environmental science. Um, I don't have this one saved. I don't really like it that much. Um, but look at him for that. Um, um, that um, setup. And then now it's just a matter of just looking for other professors that are, or teachers that are similar to him, because you can look at a video at a glance and now boom, this is what we got to do for this week or for this day. So he's highly, highly organized, which you have to be because there is so much information for APs. So I'm not sure if that's the information you wanted to know about um, APs um, stuff, but there you go. Um, that's what I'm doing is prepping now because she's in sixth grade. Okay, so you have time. So the main thing is, is get onto some forums in your city and ask the veteran homeschoolers, hey, where did your child take their AP, okay? Because I know for some places, like for some of the Christian charters or the, the Christian co-ops, you had to be a member to be able to um, join and take your AP. So if that's the case where you live, that gives you time when that time goes around to join and then take the test. So just keep that um, in mind. It is so hard to find an AP location because um, nine times out of 10, you can't go to a public or private school to do it because they administer that during the school day. And they don't, during the school day, not on the weekends at all. Any other questions? And thank you for being excited for my book. Um, you know what? Um, well, I'll just save this for um, next week because I'm going live next week. Okay, ARCs. I'm compiling my list of ARC readers, potential ARC readers. All right, any other questions while you guys got me? Any other questions? Then we'll get out of here. Um, I will start with our hot topics, um, coming up and, um, there's a couple of things I want to talk about now that I'm not homeschooling and, you know, I can like, well, I've always told it like it is, but you know, now I can kind of just like be the auntie, auntie Nikki, um, telling you guys what's up. So, um, thank you for, um, coming in. Thank you for the well wishes on the book. And I will see you guys next week. If you've been enjoying those flip throughs, um, let me know because I have, this is what I have for next week for the flip throughs. I have, who is this? Steph says, you can go ahead and put me down for a reader. Girl, look, I do. <laughs> look. Boom. You can't see it. Steph Ark right here. <laughs> anyway, um, so I'm doing for next week. These are the flip throughs coming up. It's just, oh, this is so many pages. I'm going to have to watch a movie and do the flip through. But hold on, let me find the sweet spot for this. Oh, okay, I have to go back. So we're going to do uh, Easy Grammar. All three books. If I have the intestinal fortitude, I'll do Easy Grammar Plus. Easy Grammar Plus. All right, I think I have to stay right here so we can work. I'm going to do the Well Ordered Language, which is the grammar program from Classical Education Press. Um, I'll probably do Daily Grams, but my kid wrote in this. Yeah, whatever. Um, and then all about reading. And 
I can't really get, hold on, let's see if I can get to it. Now, if you guys want me to um, do a flip through on something, let me know. Okay, and then we'll do all about, well, how come? Oh, this is the green book, so it won't show up. My bad. Hold on, I got a red one. Ah, yeah. So, there you go. I have a raggedy green screen. Why is it doing all that? Anyway, all about reading. So we got that, and and then I'll do like some hot topics, like, um, you know, some hot topics. And then I'll go back to some regular videos. Um, I have um, dealing with sibling conflict in the house, how to do narration, how to do dictation. Did you know there's French dictation? You ever heard of that? Um, we'll talk about more books, favorite books for kids to read. I'm just looking at my calendar because I'm trying to be all organized and professional. <coughs> um, how to use a ruler. Do you know? I read something that said, I think it was in the Business Insider. You can find all kinds of little interesting stories in business magazines. It said about 80% of people didn't know how to use a ruler correctly. And the people that did, most of them were like carpenters, you know, tradesmen because they have to cut, you know, and measure stuff. So they need to know. But most of America doesn't know how to use a ruler. So I watched this video after I saw that. And there's this older lady, she shows you how to use a ruler. And I think she has like 5 million views, which validated that article from Business Insider. <clears throat> so I'm going to I'm gonna do what she did. And I'm going to show it to you, but I'm going to give her credit and, I, and I'm going to link back to her, her, her channel. It was an older lady. She was probably like 60. She didn't show her face, but she talked really. Oh, like, we go cut. So I'm like, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. But I was flabbergasted. So I want to do these little five-minute homeschool tips, you know, in it, in it, in a minute, where I just like cover little things like that. Just things you just you never knew how to do, and you just kind of try to figure things out, but you're just too lazy or tired to figure out the right way to do it. I don't know, but I got a lot of stuff. Um, I will be doing flip throughs on Beast Academy, uh, Singapore Math. Um, I want to do um, woke homeschooling, American history, but I need to reach out to the sister because she is real protective of her work. And I don't know if she would want me to show all her pages. So I'll have to reach out to her first before um, I do that. I want to respect um, um, her privacy, um, or just her, her stuff. So, you know, it's different when it's a publisher. Um, all right. You guys are coming in strong just when I'm, just when I was about to leave. All right. Hey, coffee with, uh, Clivey or Clivey. No, Clivey, because it's one B. Do you have lightning literature flip through? Boom, baby. Yes, I do. Y'all want me to go grab it? I just looked at it this morning when I was, uh, Remember when I yelled at my kid, I said, where's your key? And he left it in his pocket and it got washed and it was in the dryer. And I'm like, what is this? Something like glass is about to break. It was a big old key on his lanyard hitting the, um, the glass in the dryer. So um, I went and got it. And then I went to his room and I saw the lightning literature and I said, I need to do a flip through on that. So if y'all want me to get it, I'll go get it. But let me catch up on these comments. Um, Hey, Sade. Okay, so listen, I am absolutely, I know I said this two weeks ago. I am absolutely contacting you because I got to talk to you about something. And now that I have my stuff together, I have this cover reveal done. Now I can breathe Wusa. So I'm going to be contacting you. And I have to because I need to um, I, uh, get my ARC team together. All right. Um, Joe uh, Paya. Am I saying that right? Paya? Paya or Paya? I didn't get the live notification. That's YouTube hating on me. YouTube has had me shadow banned for like four years. I'm going to tell y'all why. I had three videos. One, I had 17,000 views. Another, I had 10,000 views. And then YouTube asked me, Farrakhan had, I'm just going to tell you, 
he um oh, what was it it wasn't his annual address or something it was it wasn't like a big thing or an interview but youtube said it came up in my feed because i'm not subscribed to any of his channels or the nation or anything like that but it popped up on my feed and says is this you know when google asks you that question is this a good recommendation for you or something like that and then they have like the smiley faces happy sad whatever or inspiring motivating whatever whatever and i thought oh motivating because it was something um uplifting that he was um i guess talking about do you know i haven't had a video reach a thousand <laughs> since then and i, I kind of noticed it immediately i'm like wait a minute my math um beast academy i have like thousands of uh views and then it was like nothing. So I, I don't know, maybe I'm just looking too much into it, but I think I was shadow banned because of Farrakhan. <laughs> All right, let me go get the lightning literature. You guys want you guys are gonna wait. All right, Joe says, yes, that's it. Okay, that makes sense. I've been a follower on here for years, but just found out you did lives two year two two lives ago. Also, YouTube. And I know a lot of um, content creators, they hate this. YouTube doesn't notify, even if your notifications are on, YouTube will not notify all of your followers, all of your subscribers. They don't do it. Um, you Like if you go into your analytics, you could have 10,000 subscribers. 3,000 of them or 200 of them might get your notification. So it's real kind of shady like that. But let me get, who asked for the lightning literature? Okay, coffee. Let me get the lightning literature. And I'm not going to do like a whole flip through, but I, shoot, I might have, oh my goodness, it's right here in front of me. <laughs> because I was going to do a flip through on it. Aren't you lucky? All right, Clivey. Is it Clivey? Because if it's Clevey, you need one more B in that name. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. All right, so lightning literature. This I think this is the seventh grade one. Let's see here. What do we got here? Let's see if this green screen will cooperate. Maybe I need to go closer. No, nope, maybe I need to go back. All right, in about five seconds, I'm just gonna take down the green screen. Let's see. You know what, let me um, hook up my um, cam, my webcam. That way it'll be easy for you guys to see the pages. Y'all wanna see lightning? literature oh shoot i need my adapter dang it hold on let me see what it's like when i open up the book all right i'm just taking it down you're just gonna see all the junk all right i'm gonna take my green screen off y'all all right you're gonna see my messy background Oh, I didn't have green screen checked. Well, that was weird. Hmm. I just checked it. Now it's, that's weird. Let me see if you can see it. Wow. That's weird. It said, I, it said I did not have the green screen checked, but clearly you saw my green screen. Now, this is real life right here. Okay. So this is lightning literature i like lightning in literature i forget what child but he took a lightning literature class on online g3 you see what that is and this one is shakespeare tragedies and sonnets students guide um published by hewitt homeschooling resources all right <coughs> uh let's see so now i'm not going to do a flip through but uh, let me show you the table of contents. I really like this program. You're reading a lot, FYI. You are definitely reading a lot. But if you are really into literature and great literature, let's see, you get close, then you won't mind. And you don't have to read everything. You got Julius Caesar. You start off the bat. Well, William Shakespeare, but really that Hamlet. Now, when my kids did online G3, they did um, one semester with Shakespeare's tragedies, 
And then in the spring, it was Shakespeare's comedies. And they had, um, this book was what the, the class used. That's why I had it. I didn't teach it. I just looked from afar. But I liked it. You know, I still kept up with what they were doing. And here are the books required for the course. And um, let me tell you. So one thing, when you buy the books, let me. Um, I I use Spark Notes, and where did I get my books from? I'm trying to remember, but it, it worked really nicely because it was the same size as the the blue Spark Notes. And so with the Spark Notes, what I like is that. Um, What's the Spark Notes? Do y'all want me to go get the um the books? The Spark the um it's it no, let me just make a video on that. Hold on. Uh let's see. Lightning lit. Spark notes. Shakespeare. And it was great. My children were able to be hands off with it. Well, me hands off because um the spark notes it has the the old English the old English text cuz I did one class they had to read Beowulf. That crap, that old English is not even English. It's it's like reading Russian and um so hard. So they have the the book that the the text, the original text on one side of the page. And then on the next page, they have it in real English, like real, like they talk to you like real English, what that means, which I think is great because a lot of times um, people are um, afraid to go into uh, a lot of that literature, English literature, because the text is very dense to get through. And it's almost like reading another language. And so those spark notes, I believe they're spark notes, they're blue. They're like really small, like five by nine or something. They're great. Um, but yeah, they have um, just some general tips on how to read literature, which this is why I bought this book. Hold on, where is it? I have two books. Which, um, when you heard those books fall earlier in the video, that was one of them. Um, it's how to read literature for kids and then how to read literature for adults. And then the other one, I think it's by Mortimer something. It's um, how to read. Really good books. But let's just look at the first chapter and then I'll do um, a real flip through. All right. Um, so the introduction has just so much great information just to get you going. Okay. Reading aloud, memorizing poetry, why learn how to write. So this is definitely a classical education approach to learning. So, um, so keep that in mind. Let me just go to the introduction. Let me show you. <laughs> the introduction is C20. The introduction is 19 pages long. That This is the intro. All, all of these pages. Okay. They take it very seriously. And then it talks about why to read Shakespeare. And it goes into the why. And I always like that about a curriculum that tells you the why of doing something. Which means it's not going to spoon feed you. Okay. It talks about the sonnets, the plays the Shakespeare language, and then it goes over some of the liter literary elements like soliloquies, um, asides, dramatic irony, alliteration, all that good stuff. And then when you get to the lesson, okay, unit one, lesson one. Okay. Yeah, and then you have here the, all the figurative language, stuff like that. Okay, so unit one, lesson one, right? And then you're off you're off. And then you have some comprehension questions, things to look for while you're reading, your plot summary. Okay. This is lightning literature. This I believe was for seventh grade. I can um, double check. And then you have 
just some more of that. And then you have your comprehension questions. You see that? And what's after that? And then you have your literary lesson and the theme is appearance versus reality. So this is a great book. This will last you the whole school year because you have a lot of books to read and the work to do is, you see, it's not get in and get out, right? That's why I had them take the class. So this is a long unit. And then uh, it's a couple more pages. And then you have your writing exercises. So you see how long you can make this go, okay? And then you have lesson two, okay? So definitely, I might do a flip through on this first because it's smaller than the easy grammar. All right, so, and I think this is for seventh grade. Y'all, I don't even remember. I just know it's middle school. All right, any other questions or comments before we get out of here? I'm trying to see what grade this is. is. Oh, well. <clears throat> All right. Done with that. Let's see. All right. So no more comments or questions. Good, because I'm tired. We are at two hours. Okay. So thank you, guys. Y'all do me a favor. Put a like on the... Um, the channel, I'm trying to build my channel back up because, you know, I did that year of just going live and apparently YouTube wanted me to do some recorded videos. Um, and, you know, I was working on my book. That's why I stopped doing recorded videos so I can work on my book. So I feel like I'm, I, I have to start over and build my platform back up. So if you can, um, if you found some value in this, some value, uh, leave a like, um, definitely leave a comment if you want me to do a flip through on something. And, uh, if I don't have it, I probably have a, a homeschool friend who has it and I can snatch theirs really quickly and do that. All right. I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. You're welcome coffee. And I will see you guys next week. Uh, Sade, I will be contacting you. Um, I think on Monday I'm sending some notices out. So, so be on the lookout, um, for that. And, with all that, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Oh, I skipped some comments. Oh, thank you, Sade. I'm excited for everything you have coming up, friend. Thank you so much. Oh, Jay's in the know. Oh, I skipped some comments. Okay, got you, stuff. Hey, Jay's. Yes, everything's going well. Okay, I think I'm caught up. Uh, yep, I'm caught up. All right, guys, I'm out. Bye. Love you.